Hello, my name is Rusella Prashosa Sahagan Lagaska, and today I will be talking to you about kayak fishing down the Salt River. Yes, here in Mesa, Arizona. I myself have lived in Mesa, Arizona all my life, all 20 years. No complaints from me at all. But see, people from out of state seem to question my happiness about living here. My cousins, for example, they always ask, what do you do for fun? What exactly are your hobbies? And isn't it hot there? You can't even leave your house. And I respond to them saying, well, that's not necessarily true. I have my ups and downs here. But if you're not afraid to go explore and have a little adventure, and even in the process of that adventure, get a little wet, then follow me to the Salt River. <laughs> um, I know during the summertime, I have so much trouble. Oh, well, at least I used to. I would be there sitting on my couch, watching Netflix, clicking away my life. But then one day, I decided to reconnect with my brother, and he actually got me into fishing, which is a lot of fun. He and my dad actually got me into fishing, gave me their old fishing pole. I bought my own. I even have their tackle right there. But anyways, other than that, we've gone down the Salt River. We've taken our kayaks. We've even gone without them and gone tubing with them, which is even more fun. But other than that, I will be going more into depth about how to sufficiently and safely make your way down the Salt River while fishing in your kayak, what you need to do and how to do it, what to pack, and having a good time. Many of the items that you might need could be like a license or your kayak, your poles, what to pack, and being conscious about the weather, the rapids that you will be having to go to, and wearing your PDFs. If you're thinking about taking up a hobby that could change your whole summer or even the weekends when you have time to enjoy yourself, maybe kayak fishing is for you. This is a way to bond with your friends and family and also a great way to be outdoors. So in preparation for kayak fishing, what you need, honestly, you can go bare minimum and go out there and have a good time but that probably would not be the best idea unless you want to get stranded, be hungry, or dehydrated. So, what you need is to invest in a really good kayak. A good kayak can range from $180 to all the way to past $1,000, depending on how wide, how long you want it, and what you're going to use it for. Because many people use their kayaks for just going down and cruising down, but a lot of the fishermen who go and kayak fish use a wider angler that is more sturdier for like sitting or going down rapids and it's much flatter at the bottom. Um, you also need two trusty vehicles and a couple buddies to go with you because you do not want to go alone in case of an emergency. Um, when going to the very top of the Salt River you definitely want to take a truck that has enough space for your kayaks or a SUV that can hold your kayaks on the top with a strap. Um, with your friends, you want to make sure that you have enough um, room for that and you're going to leave one of your friends there at the very top to watch your kayaks while both of them take the other car all the way down to Granite Reef, which is probably a 10 to 15 minute drive from there because this long flight is going to be at least seven hours if you go down there fast enough. You will need to paddle here and there, but it's totally fine. Um, other than that, you will need your licenses, passes, and poles. That is a great way to remember things. Um, with your license, you can either get a fishing license, which is about $37, but for just like 20 bucks more, you can get a combo one, which is hunting and fishing. And as well, if you're going to do any like, let's say dove hunting, um, you will need a stamp on the back, which is only $5 more for migratory. Um, and also, you will need a pass for both of the cars. Otherwise, you may get towed by the rangers. And that would not be helpful being stranded out in there in the desert. Um, for us, we have the American of Beautiful pass. We have a military one and we have a regular one. Um, the military one, if you are a part of the military or was a part of the military at all, um, it's free if you just apply for it. Um, 
just a regular pass is $80 and it lasts the whole year and it gets you to any of the parks, which is awesome. Um, you can also buy a, a one-day pass from any gas station that has the Tonto Pass. It's a blue little pass that you scratch off the little numbers. Um, make sure you have that displayed on the car so you don't get towed away. And of course, you want to have your trusty poles like so. Like so. And if you also want, you can bring your tackle with you as long as you have straps on your kayak. But with that, I would rather have a backpack that has everything in there and is water resistant. So you will be getting wet in the process. So you want to pack light, but enough to be sufficient for the whole day. Um, what to pack is also very important other than that because you need a cooler. A cooler is so helpful, especially one that will strap onto there. Um, you want to make sure that you have enough water for you and your friends who are going with you because it is very important to stay hydrated, whether it is during the summer or the winter time. Especially during the winter time, you always think, oh, I'm not going to get hot because the sun's not out. That's not true. That's the worst idea ever. Drink water. Hydrate or dehydrate, as they say. Um, also, I highly recommend bringing a trash bag. Along the way, um, you will see a bunch of trash from the tubers. Um, there are several events that the Salt River um, Company does, and there's so much trash. You know what? Why don't you help the environment while you're having a good time? Just pick up trash as you go. That's what my brothers and I do as well. Um, you also will need snacks to like sufficiently satisfy your stomach as you're going down. Um, what I pack are chips, sandwiches, and that's about it. You can bring bread, cheese, and meat if you prefer with mayonnaise in a bottle. And you can stop either way. We usually stop by the bridge, which is like a halfway point to where you need to go all the way to the Granite Reef. And that is really great to do because you will get tired. Your arms get tired after rowing and going past several rapids. And even if you fall off like I did. <laughs> um, there are several points. Like I said, the bridge is the halfway point. And then further down is Fondi. That's the stop right before Granite Reef, which is the last stop, which is awesome. Um, now that you kind of have an idea of what you want and if you want to invest in a kayak, um, you can be able to be prepared. And going more into depth about that, um, what your experience might be like, you know what, you can expect different things. Each time I went has gone completely different. Um, you want to wear something light depending on the weather or if you want to be able to move around. For me, I like to wear a long sleeve because I don't like getting sunburnt. I like wearing camouflage because it, in my head I say it helps because the fish can't see me. Um, you also want to bring a trusty fishing hat or any type of hat that you prefer wearing. Um, as well as sunscreen because, you know, you don't want to wreck your skin while you're out there for seven hours. I highly recommend leaving early in the morning as others do because... Um, if you leave later on, you may run into tubers, which can be a hassle going around them. Um, other than that, um, wear stuff that you don't mind getting wet. Um, wearing shoes that won't bother you being wet the whole time. For me, I wear my boots, um, uh, my hiking boots, which I don't recommend because once you get them wet, it's like you're soaking them up in them. Um, my friends usually wear Vibrams or flip-flops. I don't really trust flip-flops, but like t vas are really good because they have a strap on there. So you don't really have to worry about them slipping off your feet. Um, other than that, there will be a lot of rapids that you will be going down depending on how bad the water is, meaning... If it's low, then you won't really hit the rocks. But if it is low, you might have to get out of your kayak and pull it a little bit further down so you can actually go down the water. Um, and there is a chance of flipping. For me, flipping was not fun at all because I got all my clothes wet. I lost a pole and I lost a, um, my phone. I didn't completely lose my phone, but 
If you have a dry box, make sure to put it, your phone in a dry box because you do not want to spend money on a new phone when you can literally spend $10 on a dry box and keep your phone safe. Uh, as well as hydration breaks, like I said, make sure to hydrate all the time. It's very important. So now that you kind of understand what you're going to be expecting, it seems like a lot, but it isn't. It's so worth it being able to see the beautiful Arizona sky, the water running down, and everything. You'll even run into wildlife. The animals that I've seen, I've never seen a raccoon other than the time that I've gone this, down the Salt River. Uh, you see so many different types of birds. One time I actually saw a gold eagle, bald eagle, <laughs> a bald eagle. Um, of course, you're going to see fish because you're going to be fishing for them. There's several types of fish. There's trout and catfish, carp, and bass. I think that's all of them. Um, there's also wild horses, which is super cool. You wouldn't expect them to be out at any time, but they're year round. Um, especially during the winter time when they're about to look for food right by the water. They're always right by the edge of the water and you can see them. They're like five feet away from you. Um, as well as that, as much as that all sounds like fun, why not go out there and try it? Just do it, you know? Now that you're a little bit more informed about what to do out in the Salt River, um, you'll be able to enjoy the day out. Yes, a full day, because you're going to start early in the morning and then end at night. And you want to get out there, out of the water before nighttime, because it can be hard to see things. Um, in conclusion, you know, get a group of three or more and have fun. Have so much fun. Get wet. Don't be afraid. Catch a couple of fish. Um, you get to see the Salt River up close and personal as well. Wear your PDFs, which is also your life vest. Many people don't wear theirs because they're like, oh, it looks stupid on me or I don't think it will fit. You know, find a fit, like a fitted life vest. That will save your life because I know mine saved my life. Um, and lastly, know before you go. That is the most important thing, is know before you go. Because you do not want to be stranded out there on your own without food, water, and it's always scary, but it is an adventure. It's awesome to be out there. <laughs>